Good evening. Welcome back to Tuesday Night Bible Study. Tonight, let's get started. We'll pick back up on the, hopefully I'll finish this, uh, the ancient Galilean wedding and how it foreshadows the biblical rapture, the second advent, and the marriage feast of the Lamb. I hope I'll finish that up tonight. We'll let everyone know that I will not be online next Tuesday night, which would be July the 2nd. But I will be back on normal schedule on July the 9th. So I want to go ahead and let everybody know that. Let's get started and let's get back into this. We are up to the parting gift, uh, which we know, and I'm going to, first thing I'm going to let everybody know is I'm going to read how the old wedding tradition, the parting gift, is to review, and we're going to look at the, how it ties in with Christ. Okay, so I want to let, let everybody know that. So the parting gift, and this this was, uh, of course, when I say that, this will be uh, how uh, how this actually was followed by the Jewish community back in this back in the day. Before separating for the waiting period, the groom gave a bridal gift to the bride as a reminder that he loved her and he would return for her. Now, what has what did Christ leave the church? To let, him, to let us know that he loved us and he would return for us. Let's look at this. Uh, the parting gift from Christ was the promise of the Holy Spirit. Jesus sent the Holy Spirit as a seal and down payment that he would return. So we're going to look at several scriptures tonight to tie this in. So let's go to Acts chapter 1. Verses 3 through 5, we'll start there as soon as my Bible loads here. <clears throat> Acts chapter 1, verses 3 through 5. And we know this was when they were talking to Christ. He had, he had already risen from the dead. He had appeared to the disciples and around about his community for 40 days. So let's get started. To these he also presented himself alive after his suffering by many convincing proofs, appearing to them over a period of 40 days and speaking of the things concerning the kingdom of God. And gathering them together, he commanded them not to leave Jerusalem, but to wait for what the Father had promised, which he said, you heard of from me, for John baptized with water, but you will be baptized with the Holy Spirit not many days from now. And this is the bapti baptism of the Holy Spirit is not the water baptism. That is actual spirit baptism. In other words, when do, when do we receive the spirit baptism? Once we, at the moment of salvation, the Spirit enters you. And there's a lot of teaching out there that he doesn't. Now, you've got to really use some common sense here when you're talking about this. We know the Godhead is God the Father, the God the Son, and the God the Holy Spirit. How can Christ be in your heart and not the Holy Spirit, folks? Now, we'll we'll get into you know gifts does come later, and you have to, sometimes you have to pray for gifts, and you know of course that's a lesson for another day. But the Holy Spirit enters you at the moment of salvation when you receive Jesus Christ in your heart. All right. Let's go to the next chapter over. Let's look at Acts 2, verses 1 through 4. And we know on this, this is where the, uh, the Holy Spirit fell on the day of Pentecost. It says right here, When the day of Pentecost had come, they were all gathered together in one place, and suddenly there came from heaven a noise like a violent rushing wind, and it filled the whole house where they were sitting. And there appeared to them tongues as a fire, distributing themselves as they rested on each one of them. So we see the promise that Christ gave in Acts 1. We see the deliverance of the Holy Spirit in Acts chapter 2. And many Bible scholars believe this was just a very few days after Christ ascended. Let's go to Ephesians chapter 1. I'm going to do a couple here from Paul. Ephesians chapter 1 verses 13 and 14. Paul tells us right here, In him you also, after listening to the message of truth, the gospel of your salvation, in him is Christ, of course, having also believed, you were sealed in him with the Holy Spirit of promise, 
who has given us a pledge of your inheritance with a view to the redemption of God's own possession to the praise of his glory. Now, you are sealed with the Holy Spirit, okay? That's the promise. That's the parting gift that Christ left us with. Let's go to one more. 2 Corinthians Chapter 1, verse 21 and 22. Now he who establishes us with you in Christ and anointed us in God, who also sealed us and gave us the Spirit in our hearts as a pledge. This is the promise. This is the promise of the Holy Spirit. This is the parting gift that Christ left us with. Now, Let's talk about the next bullet here, which is the sixth. Now let's go back and review during the waiting period. And, and we know, first we're going to look at the Galilean wedding, and then we're going to tie it into how the waiting period of the church, okay? During the waiting period, while the bride waited, she would ready herself by keeping busy and preparing herself for the wedding day. She would prepare herself by making wedding garments, having lamps prepared, and learning how to be a good wife. And we also know what happened at the period of waiting with, with uh, the groom. The, the groom would go back to his usually his father's house, and he would prepare a home for the bride, which was usually added on to the father's house. Now, let's look and see how the waiting period ties in with the church. The sixth bullet. During the waiting period, while the church awaits Christ's return, she is to ready herself by keeping busy and preparing herself. All right, what are we to prepare ourselves for? Well, a couple of things. She, such as obeying all the, that is commanded for us to do, we are, as Christians, to build his kingdom, which is called the Great Commission. Now, how do we build his kingdom? Let's go look at this. He tells us. Let's go to Matthew. Matthew chapter 28. I do believe it is. Yeah, Matthew chapter 28, 18 through 20. And this is what Christ tells us here. This is what we are to do. All of us can't be preachers and teachers. But as lay members, we are to build his kingdom. We are to, we're to plant the seed of salvation. We, we all, all we can do as a Christian is plant the seed. It's up to God to give the increase. And I've said this before. Anytime, anytime we are called a witness to someone, just keep this in mind. God is already ahead of us, and he's probably already dealing with that individual when he calls you to do to witness to them. God does, is not going to send you unprepared, but it is our responsibility to study God's word to prepare ourselves. 2 Timothy 2.15, it says we must study to show ourselves approved unto God. So we must study God's word to be able to carry it out and teach and tell others about him. So let's look at this great commission that God challenged us as Christians to build his kingdom. And Jesus came up and spoke to them, saying, All authority is given, has been given to me in heaven and earth. Not part authority, not half authority, not three quarters. He says, All authority is given to him. He says, So there go forth and make disciples of all nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Now, everybody can't baptize. Everybody is not a preacher and a teacher. But it says, teaching them to observe all that I have commanded you, and lo, and this is a promise he gives us, I am with you even to the end of the age. So this is the Great Commission. This is what we are to do, the bride. We are the bride in Christ. This is what we are to do while we're waiting in that waiting period. And the church is in that waiting period. We've been in that waiting period now a little over 2,000 years, guys. Let's move on. Let's look at the wedding procession or taking of the bride. All right. Let's look. Let's go back to the Galilean wedding and see how it, how they the tradition goes. 
the wedding procession or taking of the bride with no forewarning of the bride. The groom would typically come at night and take his expecting bride to come live with him. They would be accompanied by a bridal procession. The, fa the, the father's or the groom's father, the man's father, determined the time for him to go and receive the bride. Now, when the father looked at the son and said, all right, son, go get your bride, a messenger of the groom would shout, Behold the bridegroom! And a shofar would blow. In other words, the, the trumpet or the horn would blow. At this point, these two sounds where he would say, Behold the bridegroom and the shofar, this would gather this wedding procession and this wouldn't have all of them, which is in the invitation to get to join in the procession, and they would all parade to the bride's house to pick up the bride and bring her back to her father's to the father's house of the groom for the wedding. All right, now we know that's tradition. Let's see how it ties in with the church. The wedding procession after a period that only the father knows. Christ will return to receive his church. Now, God will declare the time for Christ to return and receive his church. Is that in scripture? Absolutely. Matthew chapter 24, when Christ is teaching, he tells them right here. And we're going to talk about this a little bit before I move on. I want to, I want to clear this up. Matthew 24, chap, chapter 24, verse 36. He says, but of the day and hour, no, no one knows, not even the angels of heaven, nor the Son, but the Father alone. Now, at this point, Christ is God in the flesh. All right. They're all three the Godhead. They all three have the same power. Not one has more than the other. So why would Christ make this statement? At this point, folks, he was God in the flesh. He was a man in, in the flesh. So he was letting them know that at this point he did not know. But when he resurrected, when he went to heaven, he right now is sitting on the right hand of the Father making intercession for me and you. He is part of the Godhead. He knows. He knows when he's coming back. Okay, so I want to clear that up. Now, how's all this going to go down? Let's look at it. When Jesus returns to receive his church at the rapture, a messenger will shout, Behold the bridegroom, and a trumpet will blow. How do we know this? Then everyone who is invited will join in the procession. Well, let's go look at it. 1 Thessalonians chapter 4 tells us every bit of this. First Thessalonians chapter 4. Let's move down to verses 13 and 14. But we do not want you to be uninformed, brethren. He's talking to the church. But those who are asleep, so that we will grieve as we do rest, who have no hope. For if we believe that Jesus died and rose again, even so God will bring with him... Those who have fallen asleep. Now, let's move on. For, and, and here you go. Here's your, here's your shout, and here's your trumpet. For the Lord himself will descend from heaven with a shout, with the voice of the archangel. Behold, the bridegroom, with the trumpet of God, there is your shofar, and the dead in Christ will rise first. Then those who are alive and remain will be caught up, that's a rapture, together with them in the clouds to meet the Lord in the air. So shall we always be with the Lord. Therefore, comfort one another with these words. So we see here, when, 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 God, when God steps out, son, go get your church. All right. Jesus is going to leave heaven. He's going to, the Bible says he's only going to come to the clouds here. We're going to be caught up to meet him in the air. He's not coming back to the earth yet. This is not the second advent. All right. What's going to happen? Just like wedding tradition, 
the archangel is going to shout, Behold the bridegroom. It says with a shout. With the voice of an archangel. We know the it's probably going to be the messenger Gabriel. I could be wrong. I'm speculating. The Bible doesn't say. It's either Michael or Gabriel. That's the two mentioned as, as your archangels. Usually Gabriel is the messenger angel. All right, then the shofar is going to blow. It says, and the trumpet of God. So when... When, and he's going to bring the dead back with him. In, the one, in other words, the ones that's fallen asleep. When it talks about sleep in the Bible, I do not believe in spiritual sleep in heaven. I do not. That's me. I'm not, that's not biblical. That's my belief. When it talks about sleep, a Christian being asleep, now listen, listen to this. When it talks about a Christian being asleep, you have to tie that in with heaven. If it talks about the lost being dead, you have to tie that in with hell. Why would I say that? Anywhere in Scripture, when it's talking about the church and it talks about being asleep, Paul says to be absent of the body is to be present with the Lord. Okay. So we are immediately present with him. I believe we're there. I believe we know we're comforted. And I believe we know that we're there. Now, when I say I believe, that means it doesn't tell us. That's left up to interpretation. That's how I interpret it. Now, death is contributed to hell up to the lost. Revelation chapter 20, it says, Death and hell will be delivered up out of hell to be judged and be cast into the lake of fire. So death contributes hell. Asleep contributes heaven. All right. So again, this is our, this is our invitation. When, when we hear that trumpet, the Bible says we're going to be changed in the moment of a twinkling of eye. And this will be the rapture of the church. This will be your wedding procession, just like it was handled according to the old traditions. Now let's move on. The eighth, which is marriage and consummation. Now let's go back and look at the tradition. Once the bride and groom were together again, they were married and entered the bridal chamber to consummate the marriage. Now, remember, there was a parting time of one to seven years. Just varied on the groom's father. So, at this point in time, we know we're in that waiting period. Now, let's look how this is going to tie in. After the rapture, the marriage and consummation, Christ is going to rapture the church, and we know it's going to be as a thief in the night. And there's many places in Scripture that says it's going to be as a thief in the night. Remember, when, when in the old tradition did the use of the groom go? In the night. Now let's look at this. Let's look at this. Matthew chapter 24. Let's look at this. Verses 40 through 44. Anywhere it talks about thief in the night, I believe it is the rapture of the church. Matthew chapter 24, verse 40 through 44. Jesus is telling a parable here. He says, there will be two men in the field. One will be taken, one will be left. Two women will be grinding in the mill. One will be taken, one will be left. Therefore be on alert, for you do not know which day your Lord is coming. But be sure of this, that if the head of the house had known what time the, of the night the thief was coming, he would have been on alert, and he wouldn't have allowed his house to be broken into. But for this reason, you also must be ready for the Son of Man is coming in an hour when you do not think he will. So we, as a church, we should be expecting him, but we do not know the day, time, or hour. The Bible doesn't say we don't know the season. Okay? Let's move on. Let's go to 2 Peter chapter 3, verse 10. But the day of the Lord will come at like a thief, in which the heavens will pass away, and with the roar of the elements will be destroyed with intense heat, and the earth and its works will be burned up. Now let's move on. First Corinthians 
chapter 15, verses 50 through 57. Let's go over these. Now, I say this, brethren, Paul here's talking to the church, that flesh and blood cannot inherit the kingdom of God, nor does the perishable inherit the imperishable. He says, behold, I'm going I'm to show you a mystery. I'm going to tell you a mystery. The church is a mystery, folks. We will not all sleep, but we will be changed. Remember, we talk about sleep. We talk about heaven. In a moment, in a twinkling of an eye, at the last trump, here we go, for the dead, for the trumpet will sound, and the dead will be raised imperishable, and we will all be changed. For the perishable must put on imperishable, for the mortal must put on immortality. But when we, when this perishable we have put on imperishable, and this mortal we have put on immortality, then will come about the saying is written, death has swallowed us up in victory. O death, where is your victory? O uh, and where is your sting? The sting of death is sin, and the power of sin is the law. But thanks to be to God who gives the victory through the Lord Jesus Christ. Therefore, he says, my beloved brethren, he's talking to the church, be steadfast and movable always, abounding in the work of the Lord, knowing that your toil is not in vain in the Lord. So he tells us right there how he's going to return. As a thief, he's coming back. He's going to be, it's going to be an unexpected time. Let's look at 1 Thessalonians chapter 5. I've got a couple more here. First Thessalonians chapter 5, verse 2. For you know yourselves, know full well that the day of the Lord will come like a thief in the night. One more, Revelation chapter 3. Verse 3. So remember that you have received and heard and keep it and repent. Therefore, if you do not wake up, I will, I will come like a thief and you will not know what hour I will come to you. All right. Let's finish this up. The wedding feast. Now, this is, this is where we're going to tie it in here. We've done tied in. The, the rapture, the second advent, is coming with the marriage feast. And we're going to tie the last two in right here, okay? So let's look at the, marri the feast. The wedding feast lasts seven days in the old, in the old uh, uh, view of it. The bride is kept away in her bridal chamber until the last day of the feast. At the end of the feast, the bride is unveiled and joins the festivities. Let me say that again. This is very important. The wedding feast lasts seven days. The bride is kept away in the bridal chamber until the last day of the feast. The first six days, the bride is not brought out. On the seventh day, at near the end of the feast, the bride is unveiled and joins the festivities. Now, I can't answer as to why. That's their tradition. Now, how does this tie in with the second advent? How does this tie in with the seven-year tribulation? Let's look at it. The wedding feast. There will be a seven-year tribulation on earth. Okay? Now, during this time, the church will be hidden away from the earth. It's going to be raptured. It's going to leave and... There's going to be people wondering what in the world has happened to all these people. Because I really believe people is not going to know that your church is raptured. Because I think it's a secret taken out, and I'll tell you why I say that. Because when the Antichrist comes on the scene, for that first three and a half years, there's people literally, he's going to, he's going to, he's going to do miracles. He's going, to, he's going to be able to call far from the sky. People's going to believe that's Jesus, Okay. So, the church is going to be raptured. It's going to be hidden away from the earth and heaven. At the end of the seven years, Jesus and his bride will return. And once we are returned to this earth, there's going to be a feast that 
all the church will be invited to. Let's look at this. Verse 19, uh, Revelation 19, 7 through 9. It tells us about the feast right here. And then we'll move on down and finish this up. Stay in Revelation here. Let us rejoice and be glad and to give the glory of him for the marriage of the lamb has come and his bride has made herself ready. It was given to her to clothe herself in fine linen, bright and clean for the fine linens is the righteous and acts of the saints. Then he said to me, right blessed are those who invited, who are invited to the marriage supper of the lamb. And he said to me, Though these are true words of God. Okay, now, the bride will be unveiled to the world just like after the six days, the seventh day, the bride's brought out in the old tradition to the, to the party, okay? The bride is going to be unveiled on the, at the, in the seventh year to the world when she returns with Jesus at the second advent. Let's move down to verse 14. And the armies which are in heaven... Clothed in fine linen. Remember, who's clothed in fine linen? The bride. If you go back up here, it's what I just read. He tells us how we're clothed. He says right here, it was given to her to clothe herself in fine linen. He tells us down here who's returning. He was, let me get to it. And the armies of heaven are clothed, clothed in fine linen, white and clean, we're following him on white horses. So we will return and they will be a marriage feast like we've never seen. Levice 1. Marriage and celebration. The newly couple would go home and live in the prepared house of their of their that their husband the husband had prepared during the waiting period and they would live there, usually till death do their part. If you want to read about them, our marriage, the bride's marriage and celebration, <clears throat> after all this, the bride and the groom will be in, together in eternity and we will live and reign with Christ a thousand years. And then there's going to be the age of ages, which you can read about Ch Revelation chapter 21 and 22. Guys, this will be the new heaven and the new earth. This will be the new Jerusalem. And it'll be a time, guys, like we've never seen. Guys, this ties perfectly in with the ancient Galilean wedding. And remember, our Lord is 100% Jewish. It foreshadows 100% the biblical rapture, the second advent, and the marriage feast of the Lamb. And we are called the bride several places in Scripture, as well as Christ has called himself the bride's groom. Please, guys, like and share so God's word gets out. And please remember, I will not be on next Tuesday night. But please join back in with me July the 9th, and we'll pick back up, good Lord willing. Everyone have a blessed and wonderful night. Hope everyone has a, a, a wonderful and joyous Independence Day on July 4th. You guys have a wonderful evening. Please like and share. Thank you, guys, and good night.